I've seen fire and I've seen rain I've seen sunny days that I thought would never end I've seen lonely times when I could not find a friend But I always thought that I'd see All right, well, welcome to the first edition of the Wild Extra podcast that will be named later. <laughs> uh, I'm Charlie Mahini. I got Giles Farrell on my right, Ben Rubens on my left. We all hate James Taylor. <laughs> this is true, very true. <laughs> we decided to record this at McGovern's, which is down the street from the XL Energy Center, out here on West 7th, and uh, Ben found out as soon as he got here that there was a James Taylor concert going on tonight. And then parking would be a nightmare, which is wasn't that bad. No, it really wasn't. Uh, you know, I had to shell out ten bucks for a parking and a ramp, but that was my fault. So, oh, you got yeah, I just did. just next time if we decide to take this on the road, let's just check right. the event calendar. Yeah, well, at least it wasn't like a Taylor Swift concert or That's something. True. I guess. Well, the worst part was that when we got in here, they were playing James Taylor songs straight for <laughs> half an true. hour. That's <laughs> true. Which I don't hate James Taylor <laughs> right. necessarily, but but for an hour it might be a bit much. It's I did, a little too mellow to talk hockey. I right. did get a kick out of the bartender who flew by, and he just said, "I hate James Taylor." <laughs> <laughs> that was good stuff. He did look like he'd been on an eight-hour shift, and it was eight <laughs> hours of fire and rain, and this is probably true. Carolina on mine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That would that would probably do me in too. Anyway, back to more hockey pressing-related matters. It's Sunday right. night. And uh, the big news today, which is not wild related, but it was sort of wild related because he's yeah, an ex wild, wild player related. and sure. a wild great, if you want to call anybody a wild great, <laughs> uh, is that Dwayne Rollison is on the bench tonight at the age of 45. Suited up. The Anaheim Ducks. Ready to go. And may go in from what we know because Jason LaBarber is getting lit up. Yeah. Uh, I was 3 to 2 of the Ducks last time I checked. Oh. So well, they he, turned it around. You so said I'm, he'd given up two goals. Yeah, it was, it was quick, but. He is, seems to have turned it around. So I'd have to check. It's it probably a little, the kind of game where defensemen are just going out of their way to block everything. Right. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like the time in youth hockey when you have to suit up the kid who's not actually a goalie and the defensemen are just bailing out, just full on diving into the puck as, as much as they can. You end up with like 10 shots on net by the end of the game and the kid still lets in three. And we should be clear on this. This is not a situation where Dwayne Rolison has signed with the Ducks. I mean, <laughs> no. in a way that he is their goalie He's a coach, goal coach. Yeah, yeah. which we learned tonight. Uh, but it's an emergency situation. Frederick Anderson injured, John Gibson injured, LaBarbera's their third guy. Right. And Dwayne Rollison, who is seriously 45 years old, <laughs> hasn't played for a while. <laughs> Although what I did learn in looking this up is that he was the last player to play in the NHL who was born in the 60s. Oh, wow. Oh, he just, just beat out Mark Recchi. Oh, yeah. So, cool. Mark, uh, Mark Recchi. Which is a little unfair because goalies <laughs> can go forever. It's but true. Uh, But he could potentially go in tonight. We've seen this with the Wild from time to time when – their goalies get hurt. Suiting they up always anybody get hurt. who's ever played goalie before, yeah. Anybody, anybody local who I forget has the, goalie pads. Who was the guy last year? What was the guy's name? Oh, my goodness. Um, I have no idea what his name he was. was. He was 51 years was, old. Yeah, so, there like was a guy Paul who Deutsch. used to play. Wasn't that yes. his name? Yeah, 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 right, yeah. Good memory. He played college hockey or something like that, and they were like, hey, you, <laughs> you've played goalie before, right? Right. Sure. I wanted to go out there with deer hair pads, but <laughs> oh, God. Oh, sitting on the bench. <laughs> a, I wore these things in 72, yeah. and it still worked. <laughs> the all brown. and You see that sometimes. I yeah. mean, you and I are both beer league right. level goalies, sure. and there are goalies in there that oh, have yeah. pads that have not changed yeah. since 1982. It's really funny when you, when you play with a mix of older guys and you see the mix of equipment. You see the seven-year-old guy wearing the brown leather skates with mm-hmm. the metal tubes, mm-hmm. and then you see the seven-year-old guy wearing like a $600 pair of brand new Bowers, too. Oh. It's like... Oh, well, I guess it's a good investment. <laughs> in terms of beer league age. players, I don't know about beer league goalies, but there's one one rule I know about beer league skaters is that if, if they're older and they're out there with 25-year-old guys, watch out because they're crafty. <laughs> yeah. They have 50 years of skating experience, and they you cannot take the puck no, away from them. No, no. I have been burned mercilessly by a 70-year-old man. And I consider myself to be a pretty fair goalie for my level right. of play, but I have been embarrassed thoroughly by uh, an yeah, older I'm, player. I'm, I'm with you on that. They, 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 they know where to go. They'll, I'll give them that. They don't necessarily have the speed, obviously, or, right. or the zip on their shot, but they definitely know where to be. It's and, just and a slow dangle it right is. in front of your net for 20 <laughs> minutes, and then you're down and out. They put it in. It's so like in the, essence, you're telling me it's like watching Andrew Burnett play. Well, kind yeah. Of, yeah, it's right. I mean, Andrew similar. Andrew Burnett now or Andrew Burnett 2003? <laughs> Both. Both. <Okay. laughs> yeah, I've, I've definitely been a victim to that before. That, and they just they love to creep on the back door, and all of a sudden you don't even know they're there, and they right. get a cross-crease they're goal on you. just hanging out in the right yeah. spot. 
then you just feel completely, you know, emasculated that this 70-year-old just absolutely shelved one. It's just like... I just on. leave at that point. <laughs> That's probably not a bad I'm idea. No. Yeah. It's going to get better. <laughs> you can make 10 awesome glove saves in a right. row. People will be like, yeah, but he <laughs> toasted you. Yeah. You just got <laughs> scalded by a 60-year-old <laughs> wearing tube skates. <laughs> <laughs> uh, telling personal stories about yeah, John Yeah, no, it, it gets ugly. It can get ugly. <laughs> Not as bad as my days playing community college hockey, but almost as ugly. <laughs> oh, that would have been fun. It was I didn't get that far. Fun necessarily wasn't wasn't the word for it, and it wasn't an accomplishment either. I Were was there the only guy that, community college hockey. I, feel um, like it's be I, I choose not to comment on that because <laughs> I may or may not have been involved in a couple as a goalie, so I, right. it it got chippy at times. Yeah, to sure. put it that way. There's a lot of a lot of failed <laughs> hockey players that play in that league. So yeah, there's definitely emotions ran high at times. Um. Well, should we switch gears to matters that are more pressing? To sure, why not? News? We can we can talk about something besides beer league hockey, I guess. Um, well, we're recording this one night after a pretty impressive victory yeah, over very, Dallas. Yeah, very impressive. Um, held them to 20 shots, which is a pretty good offensive team yeah. with Stars. Well, especially yes. shutting down that top line of theirs. I mean, that was that was the biggest thing. There, That top line, you know, didn't, didn't really see the score sheet, and that's mind-blowing. Considering, considering after the game, I sat there and go, did Tyler Sagan even play? Because I don't remember <laughs> right. noticing that's, him at all. We only know sign. that Ben played because I, of the well, penalties. Yeah. He, yes. <laughs> Jimmy Ben spent half his night in the penalty box. I saw that. I, I did not see the game live because I had a game of my own. Mm. But I saw the box score before I saw the yeah. game. And I looked at that and I was like, wow, Jimmy really? Ben took a ton of penalties. <laughs> right. Then I remember there are two J Bens. Oh, there's also Jordy yeah, Ben. Yeah, yeah. So I thought, well, maybe Jordy spent the night right. in the penalty box, no, which wouldn't be as Jamie. damning. And no, no, it was all Jamie. It was Jamie, yeah. I was frustrated. I always pity right. Jordy Ben. Like, oh, you're Jamie's brother. It's kind of like being Jeremy <laughs> Giambi, yeah, I think. Exactly. It's exactly or, like being Jeremy <laughs> Giambi. <laughs> it's a cross for reference, but it works. Or Brett Gretzky. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Very could true. Be. Incredibly true. Brett, I feel bad for Brett Gretzky. He scored like 70 points one year, right. and he was out of the league like two <laughs> years later. And I know this is the 80s. When, right. Yeah. I mean, Boy, Kyle everyone was scoring Diak 70 points. points exactly. Yeah, exactly. But, you were a 20 goal scorer. You were in danger of losing your job. <laughs> well, the other thing about Saturday night, though, is that obviously Thomas Vanek scored his first goal. Yeah, the, the Wild scored play. their first power play goal and yep. loved it so much that they did it again. <laughs> right. So they're seven and three. They're dominating yeah. their competition pretty much every night. They're really a whisker away from being potentially 10 and 0 or at least like 9 0 and 1 oh, or something yeah, right. like that. Very much, yeah. yeah. So what do we have to complain about at this point? The power play is clearly You clicking. know, I, I was thinking about that because I'm like, you know what? My articles aren't quite as entertaining as I wanted to be. And I figured out why today <laughs> because I am just so over, overtly negative that it really suits me when I have something to whine about. You know, I have something to really get upset and, and complain I about, think, and I haven't been able to yet this year. I mean, we can make jokes about the power play, but that's pretty much well, it. Not anymore. Not the 50% exactly. no, that's their last game. That's taken that's... from me. I have nothing. Well, I mean, their power play percentage went up from zero to seven in one game. They are not last in the league at this point. <laughs> they did pass Buffalo they by Buffalo. scoring good, twice. Good, good. So I think they're at six-something percent. I don't know if you percent. count them at any jump. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I, I did Carolina beat L.A. tonight? I haven't seen did. the score. Okay, wow. so Buffalo is officially the worst team in the NHL gotcha. right now. Hmm. Um, Although we could probably put L.A. as the worst team by proxy because they lost yeah. to Carolina. <laughs> yes. that's, that's bad. That's I think bad it's, it's like when you hear about those 0-16 or 1-15 NFL teams and they talk about a college team taking them on. The yeah. Gophers might be able to take a run at, at Buffalo. It'd probably be, better, it'd they, be a better be, hockey game than it would be a football it's, game. It's, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, even definitely. a college football, even a good college football team right. has, yeah, there's has 15 starters outmatched. that aren't going to play yeah. in the NFL. But, I mean, the Gophers, they've got, you know, I would say, what, probably 80% of their team at least is drafted by an NHL team at, at all times. And Buffalo, They're all going to um, have professional crews right, somewhere. Yeah, yeah, somewhere. Uh, that, that would be an interesting matchup. Uh, yeah, obviously, <laughs> Buffalo probably wouldn't be too hot on the idea, but uh, that's kind of what they get for putting together such a lackluster squad. And, of course, I mean, they're terrible with a purpose at this point. True. Connor true. McDavid they're or in the McDavid Jack Michael or Noah Hannafin yeah, if yeah, you really yeah. want to dig that deep. Yeah. I don't know if I believe that anybody is... I read as today, good as McDavid. McDavid right. had 42 points in 14 games. So <laughs> yeah, he's been I'm tearing he's up. The favorite to be tearing up one. the. Junior well, it's just right one now. piece of evidence, but I think you linked it on the site a couple weeks ago. It was a m one move he had where he basically goes inside out on somebody with one hand yeah. and recovers the stick control in time to roof one on this poor, <laughs> yeah, poor goalie from Sault Ste. Marie. <laughs> I don't know who they were right. playing, but. 
I mean, it was an unbelievable one in a million kind of move, yeah. and it just shows the skill that he has. I think the other two, I'm not super familiar with Eichel. Is he a forward? He is a forward. Yeah, I think so. He's a center, but yeah. Hannafin is a defender. Yeah, I don't. There's know no more way Hannibal. anybody's drafting Hannafin. I'm over. in your boat. I'm not as overly familiar with them. He just kind of. If you hear anything about the top prospects, it's always McDavid. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's him and everyone else. It's kind of like you know, I don't know that he's Sidney Crosby's level, but they're they're buzzing him like that, and it's like, well, uh, I don't know yeah, who we want. Or, or another McKinnon. Right. I mean, it was very similar. They were both 15 year olds playing junior hockey. Yeah, yeah. They have to get the special exemption to do it. Um, and I mean, if he's going to be a rookie at McKinnon's level, then he's going to help somebody. I mean, look what right. McKinnon did for Colorado. How bad would it be if the Sabres didn't get him in the lottery? <laughs> well, it's not a lock. I no, mean, exactly, it's, yeah. It's they, less they of a lock up now than like it was two, or three two years spots. ago. Yeah. Yep. So, but you got to think it's going to be like either Buffalo, Carolina, or Florida. Right. I, you would think. I don't know if Florida's going to be as bad as No, they'll, they'll be good be enough, I think, to get out of those sweepstakes because Longo's they're, playing all right. They're just bad enough or just good enough to miss yeah. the playoffs. And Ekblad just scored margin. his first goal last night, I saw. So What's that? Ekblad just scored his first goal last oh, night. Oh, there you go. So yeah, he's I playing. Of course, after I dropped him in fantasy. <laughs> That's what you get for <laughs> having him we in the first whole, place. We can do a whole hour on <laughs> bad <laughs> fantasy hockey decisions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's, that's the truth. Because there are no good ones. No. Not, I haven't done fantasy hockey in years. It's too much for me to keep up with. Yeah, it's, it's a bit much, but I'm, I'm doing all right now, actually. I'm doing okay. I've got Sidney Crosby on both teams, so that helps. That's a good start. Yeah. That's a nice segue, too, because yeah. that is the Wilds' next game. It's Very Sydney true. Crosby and the Penguins, Absolutely. Yeah. Who are offensively destroying the league. <laughs> yes. Um, they have, I think they're averaging over four, po four goals a game. At this point. It's something like that. The the Wild tweeted out today that it's the top two teams in goal differential in the league, uh, the Wild and the Penguins. Uh, which I'd buy that because the Wild are makes third. Makes a lot of sense. And then their best, they have the best goals against in the league, I think, at this yeah. point. Um, but Pittsburgh has been, their power play is at 41%. <laughs> it's ridiculous. The next best power play in the league is 26. Yeah. I looked which at this today. Which is usually kind of what you see for a good good team is like 26, 27. Right. right. 41% exactly. is a good high school team. Yeah. I mean, right. that's... That's a ridiculous percentage, and it's not. They can't sustain that, I would imagine. No, but, but I mean, the, it wouldn't shock me if they were like, like you said, just south of thirty, and that's mm -hmm. ridiculous. I mean, if you're if you're up over twenty five percent, that's that's crazy, and and they're obviously uh, on pace yeah. right now for uh, much higher. They have, than they have some the, lethal scores. Yes, they yeah, have four of the top helps. twelve scores in the league. You can tell yeah. I looked at this today. Right. Uh, <laughs> obviously, Crosby and Malkin. Yeah. The other two are Chris Kunitz, who's been kind of sure. Mr. Shotgun in Pittsburgh sure. for a while. And Patrick Hornquist, who they got from yeah, Nashville, yeah, yeah. who was on pace. I saw. I checked this today, for 115 points. <laughs> that's not bad. Oh, good. I have him in fantasy. And he is fourth <laughs> on the team. Yeah, so that's his I, career high. By the way, 50 something. 52. Sounds about right. I don't think he's going to keep it up. Well, no. that's what happens when you play in Nashville. You're going to have a career high of 50. Well, that's what points. everyone said with that that James Neal trade. They're like, yeah, it's nice that James Neal had a great year last year, but he was also playing on the Penguins last year. Yeah, right. And there's a ton but of people. But he was who, on their second line. Was he playing with either Crosby or Malkin? I think he spent a lot of time with Malkin. Yeah, not okay. for the Oslip, most part though. in his tenure there, he was with Malkin, but at yeah. the end of last year, they kind of got desperate, so they threw Malkin and Crosby on a line. Right. Well, I mean, for Tuesday, I mean, the Wild are one of the least penalized teams in terms of minor penalties in the league. Yes. I mean, you figure they're going to have to stay out of the box. To have a yeah, shot that's the definitely going to be a priority. And, and, yeah, they've done a good job of it so far. And and, the, and when they haven't, the power the penalty kill has been really, really good. I mean, you know, they've let True. up, what, it two power play goals so far I this year? So, and that's it. Like that. That's pretty good. I mean, not that we want to tempt fate, obviously. but you Much know, improved you, from the previous three seasons. Yeah, last year they were Mike like Gillen 27th in the league and letting it up, mm. in, you know, like a 20-something-odd clip. It was ugly. But this year, uh, with virtually the same um, the same players, they're – a lot better for whatever reason. I think they is made this a, a. Is this a national game? Is this NBC Sports Hour? Um, Tuesday night, seven o'clock. I mean, it think feels it like it could might be. be actually. I'm I not positive walk, on that. Um, and this is a run. They have got five Eastern Conference teams in a row. Yeah, They're just getting them all out of there. Play Ottawa Thursday, Montreal. You got Buffalo next week, so you know nice. it's a night off. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't remember where the fifth one is. Toronto. I, maybe. I haven't looked that far ahead but. either. No, Monday, Tuesday's game, sorry, is FSN. Oh, it is. Mm, okay. NBCSN has Interesting. Blues and Devils. Huh. Interesting. I suppose they can't air all of the Pittsburgh games. True. I mean, they try, but they I mean, can't they air all of them. they try to make a good rotation of Pittsburgh got a, and the Rangers. And, and on, the Black yeah, Cox. on Wednesday night, East yeah. Coast rivalry yeah. night. <laughs> East Coast rivalry. I, mean, I understand <laughs> it is hard to show West Coast games on a Wednesday night. Right? Oh, yeah. But yeah, it's I, pretty 
pretty weighted. Oh, way well, yeah. I mean, well, because they like to start at six also. You know, that's just kind of their time slot they use, and it's like, well, all right, who do we have out of the East that's yeah. going to play tonight? You know, or the Blackhawks if they want to push it all the way back to seven. And that's one thing, but then when they start doing the weekend games, yeah. those are still all the same teams. <laughs> right. It's yeah, there's definitely, I mean, it, you know, it's not as strong because the West is so much better. It's, it's kind of like the NBA. It's kind of weird that they that the networks right. favor the Eastern Conference so much when the Western Conference is, I mean, pretty much hands down better. Well, you've got three teams that are one of the, be of the best maybe six, seven teams in the right. league, at least during the regular season in San Jose, yeah. um, <laughs> and including the Stanley Cup champion yeah. that can't get on national television no, no, to save their lives no. unless they're playing on the road. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of sad. It's probably more frustrating for the league that they can favor those teams because oh, I bet they they'd, wanna, they'd they love have to national have national games at nine o'clock. Yeah, they'd love to have the Rangers and, and Bruins be you know as good as the Kings or yeah. the Sharks or you know the Ducks or or whatever. But it's just not happening right now for whatever reason. So I, uh, a segment that we're gonna give our shot here is our, our article of the week from last week and, and this week I want to talk about something from uh, esteemed podcast member Giles Farrell um, highlighting the best acquisition that nobody is talking about I feel um, like we should have trumpet music whenever you say I, his name I don't have trumpet music <laughs> um, fanfare trumpet music uh, you know, I I have uh, I have the Jeopardy music. That's not really the same. He seriously does. Yeah. listeners. He has a lot of sound effects on, <laughs> on his phone, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> um, but yeah, the uh, the addition of Ryan Carter and and how it was uh, last minute and sudden and and obviously not nearly as ballyhooed as Thomas Vanek, but he's actually played extremely well um, until Giles wrote about him and then he promptly got injured and yeah, didn't play the sorry. next game. So. I'm you know, at I'm not going to lie. I never really heard of Ryan Carter until he signed here. Yeah, me neither. Just, <laughs> he played for New Jersey, which is a big reason why I never heard exactly. of him. Exactly. Actually, the most I'd heard of Ryan Carter is that uh, uh, an old roommate of mine, a good friend of mine, uh, used to go out with a girl who knew him oh. and went to a, drove to a wedding with him in, like, Mankato, like, five years ago. Jesus. And then, he, you know, he'd always like, ask me how Ryan Carter was doing, and I was like, all right, I, I have no keep idea. tabs on Ryan Carter. <laughs> but he's been around. I mean, he's played for Anaheim. Right, yeah, he's got a uh, He he's played for New ring. Jersey. He played for, uh, I feel like there's one other team, but I'm not going to But I'm not positive. But, yeah, no, it was obviously a good pickup, and, and, he, and he's played well, obviously, in that, in that uh, fourth, fourth line role. And, um, you know, up until the Giles curse hit him, he wow. was uh, pretty much a stalwart. You know, he kind of more or less shoved Kyle Bradziak out of the lineup for uh, the better of three weeks, pretty much. Well, the thing about Carter, to me, before this, and when we first signed him, even before the season started, back on my old site, you know, we are all writing before sure. we got here, but... Um, I wrote a piece about you know why they needed him, and it was basically sure. the, the Wild had accumulated a ton of really skilled players, yes. which Carter is not. Right. But he is also he is a grinder. Yep. He is that's the term for him, and they yep. didn't really have a ton of those. Their fourth not line really. guys were guys like at that point Zucker was a fourth right. line guy, Fontaine. Justin Fontaine yep. is fourth line. Those guys combined are like two hundred pounds. <laughs> right. So you do need a little bit of muscle yeah. because you need to create some space for yeah. people yeah. out yeah. there, even in the era of advanced stats. Yeah. And you have to shut people down sometimes right. too, and, and and the skilled guys aren't necessarily the best at that. You know, although we he's seen Zucker play unreal defensively, that kind of came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Nobody really saw that coming. So the Carter may and Carter know, does have five assists. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> he's he's up there. A lot of them, I think, came on just giving the puck to Zucker and letting <laughs> Pretty him do much, the job. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. that's not going to continue. Right. But I think I think his career high in points like thirteen. I mean, he's not yeah, an no, offensive player. I, we in don't any expect way. him to. to that was a know. sure slam dunk until he got hurt. My bad. I'll is it serious? I mean, I don't know a ton about the injury. How serious is it? I have no idea. <laughs> I, all of a sudden, oh, Ryan Carter was hurt. Yeah, it, it really kind of came out of nowhere. And, and, and you didn't see him leave game a game before. either. No. Yeah, it wasn't like, you know, with, with Brodeen or, or with Halla, obviously. Although it was you, like, you know why they're out. You might never really notice in the third period because the fourth line, they play maybe three, four shifts. and then. It's true. Well, especially with started. the comeback that we had in Boston. You know, and yeah. then... Um, you know, Thursday night was obviously that was a pretty uh, pretty epic comeback as well. So you're not seeing the fourth line out there a whole lot in the third period of, of that game because we were down two goals to start the third period. So that would explain why we didn't notice him gone. And we'll see. I mean, we'll probably get updates on him tomorrow yeah. or or yeah. something like that. I doubt. I mean, if we if we didn't know much about it, we didn't see anything happen. I doubt it's super serious. Sure. And you know, maybe it was just a it was just kind keep of keep him out kind of thing. thing like yeah. Yeah. Ed Cook was right. Yeah. No. Player of the same ilk. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, he's um, you know been obviously a good player. I'd, uh, I'd like to highlight you know a player a week, and and uh, although he didn't play, um, he didn't play on Thursday, and I don't think he he didn't play on Tuesday either. But Jonas Brodin, uh, I thought it for whatever it's worth on Saturday night played a hell of a game uh, coming back from that injury. Um, what really sticks out to me was that five on three penalty kill they had where he would just absolutely uh, shut down uh, the stars and, and really had a couple of nice clears and a couple of nice blocks. And uh, even though he missed part of the week with an injury for him to come back uh, that strong was, was huge. And I'd, I'd, I'd pick him as my wild player of the week. What do you got? My player of the week. Sure. Oh uh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you want me to go first? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Most weeks we'll be better prepared for this. Right. This is uh, you know, our first kind of show. Uh, I mean, another defenseman that stuck out to me is, is Scandella. Yeah. And it's more than just last week. Yeah. I mean, he, I think he scored, was it the winner against Boston in yes. the comeback? Yep. And it's, he's not going to be the most offensive defenseman yeah. in the wild. I mean, he shouldn't be. But he does have some offensive skill. Yeah, he takes a lot and of shots. He does, and he's always taken a lot of shots. A lot of them have missed the net right. in, in previous seasons. And if he can get a little bit more on target, mm -hmm. he's not shy about creating offense. Yeah. And I think the way the Wild play now is much more suited to defenders actually doing that, yeah, actually stepping up, up and creating offense. Yeah. It's not just one or two guys who play specifically on the power play, like Spurgeon yeah. or Suter, sure. um, where they create most of their, their points. But... Uh, I think Scandell has taken huge strides. I wrote about that. I think that was my Monday article about yep. he and Spurgeon kind of growing into a second deep yeah, pair role definitely. and how they're really a legit good second deep pair And as soon as you write that, Spurgeon gets hurt. That's right. <laughs> Which may be more serious. Who knows how long that right, will last. Yeah, that's, but I hope not. Uh, yeah, I mean, Spurgeon is a key key player yeah. for this team. Yes. And, I mean, he is, he is legitimately a, a budding star defenseman, I think. Yeah. Very um, underrated. He, yeah, what it, what it really reminds me of, and I, I thought about this a lot last year when he played more with Suter, Spurgeon, this yeah. talking about Spurgeon, is uh, when Nick Lidstrom and Brian Rafalski used to play together. Sure. Because Rafalski is a lot like Spurgeon. He's yep. totally unwanted, yeah. undersized. Yep. Another, they're also right-hand shot, offensively minded, very smart player. And Lidstrom and Suter, if I have to compare Suter to how he plays, it's yeah. Lidstrom. Because Lidstrom never hit anybody. And right. Suter, as big a guy as he is, doesn't, he doesn't throw body no, checks he unless doesn't. he absolutely has to. Um, and he bodies people off the puck, but he doesn't yeah. hit them. Well, he yeah. doesn't need to. He's so Lidstrom, skilled. Lidstrom probably threw eight hip checks in his entire career. <laughs> exactly. But it doesn't matter because his positioning was right. so perfect yeah. that it, he never Then he lost. would just pick people's pockets. I mean, mm -hmm. He didn't need to hit anybody, you're right, because he didn't need to. He mm -hmm. would take the puck from him without even making contact. Mm -hmm. And he, even if he was facing him up, and it, he was just that good. And, and Suter's the exact same way. Yeah, and, and Rafalski would, would play off that, but Rafalski is just a really bright player yeah. who had an offensive mind, was a very good shooter, and yeah. Spurgeon's got a great shot. Yes. Um, and, and so I just think he's he's that type of player. I'm not saying he's going to have the same numbers that Rafalski right. had, although he started a lot earlier. Least, I don't right. think Rafalski played in the NHL until he was like 27. Yeah. Um, but in the new skating era of players, sure. which is now a 10-year-old era, so we can't really talk about it that right. much. But uh, Spurgeon is the kind of player that can play. Yeah, and, and I think Scandella goes with him because Scandella is, like Carter offensively, Scandella is a muscle-type yep. player. He does. He's not afraid of anybody. Yep. He fought Brian Boyle last week, which was <laughs> right. dumb, but it, well. he did it. So uh, I, don't, I don't know. I've just been really impressed with the way Scandella's played all year. Yeah, long. absolutely. All right, well, I did figure it out. <laughs> um, I don't know if he had a you know outstanding week, but I've been really big on Jason Zucker yeah, so far this yeah. year. It's fish in a barrel. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I can't argue with you. I no, yeah, about him too nobody this week. can. I mean, Just, he's kind of been the team's MVP to yeah. this point so far in the season. I mean, I, Preezy's got more points, but I did highlight him yesterday as the second star of the month in October. Yeah, behind Kemper. Sure, but he probably would have been number one had Kemper not thrown. 160 minutes of shutout sure. time to begin the year. Sure. But it's just, to me, it's been really impressive how he's bought in defensively. Yeah. And just penalty killing. And starting there on the fourth line, yep. and injuries allowed him to finally get promoted up to, I guess, the second, second line. Second or if you third line, it. whichever way yeah. you want to go. Um, a scoring line. Yeah, he is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he's been phenomenal. I mean, the, nobody saw that defense coming especially. I mean, he's, he's been kind of a stalwart on the PK, which has been very good um, because of him and his speed, and then he got, even got a shorty out of it, which it's, is huge. That shorthanded goal against Tampa Bay, I missed it, but it, he was going so fast, it looked yeah. like the defenseman was 
Yeah, I don't know if I, I'm trying to think of who the defenseman was. I don't know if he was at the end of a shift and tired, <laughs> but it, and Zucker he probably was a fast. little bit more tired than Zucker at that point. Sure. But he does have wheels, and yeah. he just blew the doors off. Whoever it was, maybe an Eric Brewer. I, I want to say it was Pollard. For whatever reason, he was doing on the blue line. Oh, I think well, there you go. That's a forward. Play. Yeah. Right. So I, I don't know. That would make sense. Just on a bad rotation on their part. It right. wasn't close. No. Yeah. And I think, getting back to the point you're talking about, his defense kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah. I wonder if, you know, in past years, he was at the top of the heat prospect-wise sure. for a couple of years before a lot of guys like Niederreiter came in and, right. and Coyle came into his own yeah. and stuff like that. Um, I, and he, he kind of had a clear path to the team. Yep. And then last year he saw that even when he makes the team, he's a fourth-line guy right. unless he improves this aspect of his game. So, and getting passed over by all these other players, at least on the depth chart, sure. maybe kind of lit a fire under him a little bit to, yeah, because I, mean, I wondered if he's going to get traded. And then he got summer. hurt. They had right? a need and then for he got him. leapfrogged by virtually everybody, mm-hmm. you know, uh, the, the, the young guys, quote unquote, uh, every single one of them leapfrogged him in the packing yeah. order, you know, Nino and, and obviously yeah. Halla and, and, you know, uh, guys like that. Yeah, I think his oh. last year was, or last year, last game was like in January last yeah. year, and then yeah. injuries just kind of shut him down. So mm-hmm. he definitely had a lot of time to think about, okay, what do I need <laughs> right. to do? Unless I want to make a constant habit of playing one game in Minnesota, two weeks in Iowa, coming back up for one right. game, and, right. just, and that one game has, is eight minutes, right? You know, yeah, and and he's you know made a big impact. You know, everyone expected this kind of season out of Halla. And that obviously hasn't happened so far, but you know he's, there's still a lot of time for that. But he's really, you know, kind of the same the same mold of that super fast forward um, that just excels defensively because of his speed and, and is adding a whole lot of offense that nobody expected. I think I mean I think Zucker has more offensive upside than Halla does. Yeah, I mean Halla is if he ever scores 25, 30 points in a season, I think we'll be pretty happy with that. Yeah, I think Zucker could be more 40 to 50. Sure, maybe that's even conservative the way he started. I, right, I, he has the ability I think to be a a very good scorer in the yeah. NHL. He has such a great shot. Um, I, it's just a matter of playing consistent time. And right. he, he's always been a favorite of some fans. A lot of bloggers about right. the Wild are just saying, where's Zucker, where's Zucker, where's yeah. Zucker? And he's putting up five points a year in 20 games, mm-hmm. which a lot of it people didn't right. match up. Right. But now it does. I, I think, kind of going back to Eric Halla for a minute, I think for him this year, I think he's taking more defense. It's kind of more yeah. of a... He really a has. Big thing, especially playing on the third line. I think it was before the Tampa Bay game where he was asked about going up against Stamkos. He mentioned that his defense was a point of pride. Right. Especially last year, shutting McKinnon down in the playoffs. Yeah. yeah. And when you have a guy that's that committed to playing D and that yeah. fast. That good, yeah. And, you know, that's that's who he's going to be matched up against, the speedy center from the other team. So right, and we saw nice that on Saturday because they, after the instant chemistry that uh, Thomas Vanek and Kyle Brodziak had it's on Thursday fantastic. night, um, they did. They put Hall on the fourth line, and he centered with with Carter out. He centered the fourth line, um, you know, with Veyu and Fontaine, and that was his entire job. Was you know, I, I think they matched up against that that uh, Ben and Sagan line quite a bit. You know, not not completely, but uh, that was really um, one of their key directives of the game. And obviously, they did a tremendous job. Can so we, anyway, can we talk about Stefan Veyu for a second? <laughs> yeah, Steve. absolutely. We can talk about Steve. I I don't get it. Uh, there's got to be somebody else that they could bring up that has more long-term upside to the team. I mean, it's just going to be for fourth-line minutes. Yeah. Why not bring up Cody Allman yeah. or, or somebody like that? Is there, is there any kind of cap implication to this? I don't think so. Um, I think is Allman – I think Allman's in the same contractual situation. I'm not sure, but – um, and he's know, already been waived, so he's, he would be on right. a, a no waiver yeah, situation and shows for the rest of the year. Say, so um, I don't know, and, and I know they don't want to bring up Crannon yet because you know they want him to learn a little bit of the different North type American of player game. too. And they don't, yeah, exactly. They don't want him on the fourth line, which makes sense because he's you know kind of an offensive, uh, heavy kind of player. Um, but yeah, I mean maybe Almond, maybe I mean I, I'm surprised we haven't seen Stu Bickle in a game yet as much as they've. As much as it seemed like Yo liked him going yeah. into the season, you know, making the opening day roster even because of Fontaine's injury. I mean, but for the last couple of years, I feel like this spot on the on the roster, or even a permanent spot, would be Brett Bulmer's if he hadn't had so many injuries. Right. Yeah. And he has gone backwards as a prospect. Right. But he can do all the things that Veyu can do. Plus, he had a little bit of offensive skill. But yeah. he's tough. He's much bigger than Veyu. Yeah. It's just wish that the kid would be healthy enough to really show what he's got. Right. But maybe going forward, a guy like Curtis Gabriel or, or something like that. He's hurt too, isn't he right now? 
I want to say yes. I, I think so. I think everybody in Iowa. Yeah, <laughs> everyone, pretty, pretty much everyone in Iowa is injured right pretty now. Pretty much everyone except Pickle and Bayou yeah. and Sutter. <laughs> right. yeah. And Justin I'm not Folk. necessarily with a player like Gabriel, too. I mean, he's fresh out of junior, so he's right. not necessarily ready to do this yeah, now. They're but not quite there yet with him. It's, for the last three years, I've been kind of waiting, like, all right, when are they going to find somebody better than Stefan Bayou? <laughs> Nothing against him personally, but – it's not really helping your team to have him no. around all the time. Yeah, and but I think still he's there. what he is. It doesn't help your case when you come up for a game and then you take a terrible penalty in the first period <laughs> right. and then you, and then you sit, benched from you then sit for the next period and a half. <laughs> well, he basically didn't play almost at all on Saturday night. I mean, they, they, no. they basically rotated a forward in yeah. his spot yeah. for most of the game. I don't think he, and that's I don't even my, know if he got five minutes. Point. I mean, no, you, you've exactly. got to find somebody who can yeah. play even nine minutes a night consistently. Right. Like. You don't want to have to hide a forward because if right. you get an injury, then you're hiding a spot anyway. Right. Well, and they had Cook and uh, Carter hurt, so they're down two forwards, and, and um, they sent down Bickle to call up Veyu, which I, I think happened after the Cook injury because, you know, Veyu is a similar player to Cook, but it just, it, 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 again, yeah, it didn't make sense. Like, at well, that point, Bickle, not I mean, he's not really a forward. No, he's more of a defenseman, but but they had they had him at forward, you know, a little bit yeah. in the preseason. They at least experimented with he it. He did have a few games of forward experience with the Rangers. I don't know if it was last year or the year before. Cause yeah. He spent most of his time last year in the AHL. But, you know, the, see what you have. You, there, know, yeah. you know, to, to Charlie's point, why why dress Bayou if he's going to just ride the pine the entire game? That just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So, uh, enough griping about Steve, but uh, <laughs> that's my that's my one time beef. But you just know that I always feel that way. <laughs> That'll be a running joke. About and how much seriously, you hate I Bayou. do not hate Stefan Bayou. He gives you everything he's got. Yeah, but he just doesn't have that much. Yeah. No, you're right. And no, I get your point. He's up there in age now, isn't he? He's right. Like yeah, he's in his early thirties. Really, yeah, well, if, if you're that, old. Old. If you're that, that fringy old. of a hockey it player, it feels like he's that old. But right. Well, if you're that fringy, where you're pretty, basically a taxi squad player, I mean, yeah. you know, to be playing to be the playing past be 4A, yeah. right? Exactly. To be playing past the age of 30 is pretty incredible. You know, if you're not that good, yeah. which he isn't. Um, but so anyway, uh, transitioning on to to another one. Uh, as far as what we're working on. This week, uh, Charlie, are you writing a story about Stefan Veyu this week? It will be or? published. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wait, I'm going to write it. No, I will never write about Stefan Veyu. I don't want it to sound that negative. Um, it's in print. It's for all time. It's right. not in the podcast. You can long. write the uh, Stefan Veyu, um, the one I'm looking for. If you're going to say obituary, that's a little yes. strong. <laughs> that is really strong. Obituary. People would probably start to suspect me. Yeah. If it ever happens. He's got a motive. He said it right on the podcast. <laughs> uh, no, this I, I'm not writing an article about stuff on you. I, I guess I could. You could write, well, not his obituary, but maybe his eulogy for his tenure with the Wild. Yeah, when that when that, that happens, happens, maybe you'll I be will. On it. Okay. Yes. When he finally gets Steve, cut, Steve, we hardly knew you, <laughs> except that we did too much. No, I mean, if you really want to know what I'm writing about this week, sure. Because I'm going to go home right after this and write an article. Gotcha. I'm just going to talk about uh, the opponents, the Wild, that coming up this week. The three interesting games. Uh, gotcha. Obviously, we talked about Pittsburgh Tuesday night. Then they have a road trip, and it's into Ottawa, where they never play well, and sometimes their van mm, starts no. on fire. <laughs> yeah. uh, Sometimes they lose time. some equipment over it. I, they do. Um, and it then been the worst hockey game I ever watched. By the way, that, yeah, that equipment fire. That, that was yeah. Well, was it Backstrom played that night? I remember yeah. there was a big deal and with his goalie pads. He's the most superstitious human being mm-hmm. I've been told. At least I've been told this that you'll ever meet. And for his all equipment, equipment to go up to and just flames. be destroyed. That's. It's not a good sign. Yeah, it's that was a situation where it's like they were kind of defeated before they even took the ice just because of. The trauma, I guess, of their <laughs> equipment, equipment truck be <laughs> that won't really be the focus flames. of my preview. That's good. That's good. We Mainly focus on the talk positive. About, you know, these these are Eastern Conference teams. We don't see them very much. Sure. Just give you kind of what they've been up to. Mm-hmm. Uh, two of them have been very successful. I mean, Pittsburgh and Montreal are two yes. first place teams right yep. now. Yep. Montreal is the Saturday opponent, so they'll probably be on Hockey Night in Canada. I think. Uh, uh, maybe I don't know. And also, then, I believe that's Guy Lapointe night. In Montreal, is it? I think they're having some Ooh, ceremony because he's, st- he's the game. still scouting for the Wild. Yeah, yeah. Yep. interesting. Um, yeah, that'll be fun. I'll tune in for that. Yeah. So, Giles, I'm what are you working on this week? Uh, my big piece on Tuesday. It's going to be about the increased shots on goal that the Wild have. Hmm. I actually just looked this up. Last season, the Wild averaged 
26.6 shots per game. Hmm. Second worst in the NHL. That's pretty sad. Buffalo. Nah, it's not good. You don't want and to be any sentence that ends with <laughs> also Buffalo. Yeah. <laughs> Anything to do with Buffalo. Anything, at least right now. Buffalo. No. And then <laughs> this season, they are second best in the NHL at 35 shots a game. Yeah, I, I think that has a lot to do with them carrying the puck into the zone a lot more. Yes. I mean, they, they kind of, they basically, it was kind of a point of reference all training camp long, you know, too much where Preezy kind of went on a tirade about it, how you know, the shots are essentially, like, I think he said, four to one carrying the zone and versus dumping. I don't think I've ever seen a hockey team change how they play so drastically yeah. on offense from yes. one season to the next yep. than the Wild have right now. Think about how the Wild played two years ago when Preezy and Suter came here and then compare that to now. And yeah. Yeah. I try, not, really remarkable. try not to think about it. I guess. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, because that was, and it's something that's been insanely welcomed by the fans, obviously, because mm-hmm. the dump and chase, you know, you can, you can make whatever argument you want about how effective it was. I mean, to me, it was obviously kind of late 90s NHL, but it, it you know, it had its point. Like, it wasn't as futile as a lot of people thought, but to that point, it was incredibly frustrating for fans. Because if you did dump and chase and then you couldn't forecheck and get the puck back, it just looked like you were just throwing the puck to the other team and, and throwing your hands up, you know. So a lot of especially casual fans, it just absolutely infuriated them. So it's got a you know, it's a lot better this year. Well, well and then, I'm sorry, go well, ahead. We Justin. did we did kind of see the Wild have to dump a chase on Thursday against San Jose for the first yep. two periods, which is why they were getting down so two terribly. Goals. That they they couldn't carry the puck in to save their life, and it was the most frustrating thing. Yeah. And getting back to what you were saying, I mean, hockey teams and cities and, and stuff like that, and, and any sport, any yeah. franchise, they have personalities. Like, yes. we're doing this, and there's a Steelers game yeah. on television. The Steelers' personality, for the entirety of their history, has been tough defense, right. or at least since the 70s when they were sure. running Super Bowls. In hockey terms, you know, the big bad Flyers, or, right. you know, the, the Bruins, Broad or... Bullies. Um, and the Wilds' identity through the entirety of their their pretty brief history has been a really boring hockey team. The trap. Yeah. Yep. And that's transcended coaches, yep. it's, uh, any player that's ever played here, and they're changing that completely this yep. year to be one of the more fun teams to watch yeah, for absolutely. a neutral observer. A lot of up and down. And right now it's kind of funny because if you ever read anybody, uh, I think it was I was reading like a Colorado blog for this sort of thing, they were sure. talking about how the wild word, the trap, and all this yeah. kind of stuff. And it's, everybody is a little bit behind yeah. because they don't see us they play on a nightly right, right, basis. Right. I know, it's really I funny. I think I know the article you're not, talking about. <laughs> not that Colorado really pays attention to us anyway. Right. <laughs> right. Um, but they, but it, it it's go. funny. It's going to be fun to watch if they can keep this up, which I think they can. Yeah. Uh, the rest of the league and the rest of the media kind of catch up to what sure. the wild are versus what they were. And, I mean, let's be honest, they definitely were. Oh, yeah, just no, said it, for sure. I mean, and and that was one of the promises when, when uh, God Forsaken Todd Richards came in was he was going to turn this into an off, you know, he was going to turn this into San Jose East. Feel bad for Todd Richards, really and, and nice man. And it never <laughs> happened. It never worked, you know, it, ne- it just didn't work. We just didn't have the, well, we didn't have the personnel for it, first of all. Mm-hmm. But it just didn't happen. And then, then it even carried over a little bit into Mike Yo's tenure, like you talked yeah. about. And it's taken this long. And finally, you know, I don't know what the playoff series with Colorado had to do with it, but we're playing a little bit uh, of that, you know, a little more, I should say, of that fire wagon hockey a little bit. We're, it's it's a lot, you know, it's a lot more offensively risk taking and, and, mm-hmm. and carrying it in versus just kind of the old, you know, what worked in the late '90s for Jacques Lemaire, uh, which it exactly had been the identity of this team. Even when he had talent, New Jersey. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't change it. <laughs> no, not at all. So anyway, uh, as far as what I'm working on, um, I haven't obviously written it quite yet because it won't come out till Wednesday. But uh, I'm going to take a look at uh, the period that dare not be mentioned, um, the Monday night MSG Ooh. massacre and uh, You're a brave the man. positive change. Why would you do that to yourself? <laughs> I, I know because, well, you need to get over it. It's kind of like ripping the Band-Aid off quickly or... Or, uh, you know. Well, especially from a wild extra perspective. <laughs> it's true. I mean, obviously, we're a very new site. <laughs> yes. And a, a lot of us, and I'd never met any of yeah, the other writers neither. except for Aaron Lipensky, who I'd met for 10 minutes when we were planning right. this whole thing. Yeah. So that Me night Giles was the too. first night that a lot of us had met each other. Yeah. And we all watched a hockey game together. <laughs> and through two periods, we're like, oh, this is not this bad. This is awesome. The food's we're pretty good. Great. This is a good. Yeah. A lot of people Up turned out. Goals? Third period, we're like, well, we're never doing this again. Right. Yeah. <laughs> We thought it was bad when players were getting knocked out left and right, and we were still winning the game by three yeah. goals Man, after not, two periods. I'm not gonna blame, I'm not gonna blame anyone, but Nate Wells did show up at the beginning of the third period. That's true. He did. He ruined it for everybody. That's but, true. He did. And the next night, he tweeted out that his couch in the third period was better than Paul <laughs> <Yes>. Richards' <laughs> third period. That's true. And we all agreed. 
Yeah, but yeah, so I'm, I'm going to write about that, and I'm going to take a look, and I haven't taken a look at the stats just yet, but um, the dramatic change uh, I think that the Wild took on, especially in the third period after that game. Because before that game, it kind of seemed like they were, you know, getting a little sloppy in the third period. They were really resting on their laurels because, quite frankly, they had dominated the first two periods of every game before that and into that, and then they really got their ass kicked in that one period all season long, and um, then you see two back-to-back third-period comebacks immediately after that. I think then that's the that's the best part about it. I mean, yeah. it was a terrible Monday night, but yes. the, the positive happy ending is they got in, in the reverse situation two games in a row, yep. and they came out with four points out of it. Exactly. And that's huge. That's what good teams will do. Exactly. And that's what that's the kind of response you'd want to see as coach. Yeah. So I'm I'm not sure how many how much stats I'm able to find on it, but I'm I'm going to do a little bit of heavy digging and and maybe just some more, um, you know, blind speculation, which is what I'm good at. So we'll see where that takes me. <laughs> That's always a good thing to admit. I just, whatever, man. I just, I just make, don't I just even make care. stuff up. So how do you feel about advanced stats? Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what I can find. Corsi? Sure, why not? What's a Corsi? Yeah. We'll do it. Find, see what Corsi I want, says. I want to uh, be the ghostwriter on Corsi's autobiography. <laughs> great playing days and coaching days. I don't even remember his first name. I That's the worst part. Is it Jim? <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know. Sound, he sounds like a Jim. He sounds like a Jim. <laughs> He's a real man. Lonnie's profile says that he was a picture for the A's in the 80s. I don't know if that uh, is accurate Corsi? or not. But yeah. Of course, you, I, don't, but I, I believe obviously he was a coach with Buffalo just as early as okay. that. That's where, yeah, he oh, was coaching he? in the NHL. That's no, no, I, I know, but that's, that's obviously Lonnie's joke mm. is that he was. Oh, like, yeah, well, Lonnie. Lonnie is, and he admitted this right. to all of us, does not care about advanced stats, <laughs> right. which is totally fine. I mean, yeah, right. no, absolutely. I, and and the, if they pass the, the funny test, thing, they pass what the I test. feel about advanced stats, and I've, you know, I've talked to Giles about this and some others, but sure. I'm kind of in the middle on them. I do think they have value. Mm-hmm. And if mm-hmm. I was running a team, I'd want to know every one. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, the old school people talk about hustle and grit and right. all this kind of stuff. Right. All advanced stats really do is they honestly measure specifically hustle and grit. Right. Because if you're hustling, you're creating chances, which means you're shooting more, yep. which means you probably have the puck more. Yep. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean you're hitting people more. Right. Because you can't hit people when you have the puck. So, But I, I think there is a there is a marriage of old school, old time hockey and advanced stats. Oh, because absolutely. all they're doing is quantifying what good teams do well, mm-hmm. which is throw people off their game, possess the puck, yep. uh, win battles in the corners, yep. uh, and come out with it. So... That's where I stand on it, and I think that you know you can be both. Yeah, I hope. That's that's where I'm kind of at with it too. I think obviously there is a lot of value. When I think I threw it in my advanced stats intro. Sure. I think five of the last seven Stanley Cup jams have finished fourth or higher in the league in Corsi four. Yeah. Right. So I mean. Yeah, there's, there's something, some there's something to it, to obviously. It. There, people can't discount it. But well, these are getting to the point where you're starting to have some real data. Yep. Exactly. Um, I think I was reading, you know, Sean McKindo, his column about it, uh, maybe it was last year, or it was recently, but he's saying like, you're never going to know Wayne Gretzky's Corsi, right? Uh, but you can go back with baseball advanced stats and and yeah, you can plug them into Babe the twenties. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm uh, sure if you got into the NHL archive, you could track. Wayne Gretzky. You can watch all the games. Yeah. It would be time consuming. I don't, I don't know how they're <laughs> going to monetize that and pay somebody to do it, I mean, but somebody I, could do it. I would not be opposed to watching the 83 84 Edmonton Oilers That's true. game by game. Could you imagine the numbers for that? Holy Grad students who want to work on hockey, there's a thesis out there for <laughs> there you. you. I, my wife is going through the PhD <laughs> process right now, and uh. I honestly, from watching it, I would do that instead of what she's doing. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Oh, so yeah. I get to watch hockey 15 hours a day? Okay. <laughs> right. I actually had the, I ran into the same thing um, with the advanced versus um, old school when I, I wrote my article on Kemper last week because there really isn't anything for advanced stats on goalies. I mean, the only advanced stats they really have are just algorithms of how many saves they've made. Yeah. Um, which is nice that you, it gives you a better gauge of how they how average or above average they are. That's great, but there is virtually nothing you know by the way of of measuring you know, what he's good at outside of just making a save or not. And, well, and, and all saves are right. obviously not, all saves are not created equal. Certainly not. So that's, uh, that's something that I would like to see. And people know. talk about five on five save percentage. Right. And yes. like that as, a, as a teller. And I don't necessarily know where I land on this side of the debate, but, you know, 
old school hockey people will say, well, on the penalty kill, that's where you want your goalie to shine. Right. And they it's might make more killer. above and beyond kind of saves on right. the penalty kill. Five right. on five, obviously you're playing more five on five, so that's where you're going to see most of your pucks. But five on five shots could be from the wall. Ben's right. goalie. I'm a goalie. I've had right. a night like this. I had a night like this last night. My <laughs> team, everything, there was one good chance yeah. that I made a save on. Everything else was from the half wall. Yeah. Because my team plays pretty good defense. Right. And I made, I think, like 25 saves or something like that. Sure. But it didn't, I didn't work that hard. Right. You know what I mean? And Those are the good ones. Um, you know, NHL goalies have that all the time. Yeah. And the Wild used to do that every night under Jacques yeah. Lemaire. That was how they won games. And they'd yeah. score one power play goal and win one nothing. <laughs> right. Um, and, and so I don't know if, you know, people say, like, Jonathan Quick doesn't have a very good five-on-five five save percentage. But right. he makes ridiculous saves on oh, yeah. penalty kill. And yeah. he is very good in the crunch. Yeah. Yeah. And and there's the mental aspect of goalkeeping, yeah, which, absolutely. you know, Giles just brought up. Um, would you – if anybody who makes the argument that Jonathan Quick isn't necessarily a good goalie because his five-on-five five save percentage isn't good, <laughs> right. I'm just going to come back and say, <laughs> give me a goalie whose five-on-five five save percentage is good yeah. and tell me, would you trade Jonathan Quick for them straight no, up? Exactly. You're not. And I, and I think with five-on-five five save percentage – I also think more of the team kind of factors into that, too. Like, Ryan Miller hasn't had a good five-on-five save percentage really in a, about a half a decade. Well, that was the last time Buffalo was relevant. It was mm-hmm. half a decade ago. Right. So, Goaltending in itself is a pretty team stat. Yeah. Like goalies can do very little by themselves. Yep. I mean, you look at look at shootout save percentages. A good shootout save percentage is like 70. Right. That's a goalie working by himself. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's really – I mean – you're on an island there for sure, but that doesn't count, you know, like you said, a five on five save percentage. It doesn't count the times that you're on an island five on five. Mm-hmm. You know, the odd man rushes, the the cross crease passes, the the guy all alone in this slot. It doesn't it doesn't account for any of that. I look at goalies in hockey like closers in baseball. Yes. You might have high paid of each. Right. They are a little bit more replaceable than other positions, I think. Because and you could you could ride a hot hand for two months and win yeah, the Stanley very Cup. Much, yep. Uh, it's not. I wouldn't recommend going that way. <laughs> right. goalie. But what you overpay for with a goalie is the confidence of the rest of your team. Yep. Because the rest of the team will feed off of a good goalie. The Kings feed off Jonathan Quick. Right. Bring Absolutely. That up again. The, the Canadians feed off Carey Price. Yep. Um, and so if you want to have that built into your team, you say, all right, the back end's stable. Right. Let's give our goalie big money. Right. You know, I, I think that's no. Like so, and and same thing with the closers. That does that as hot as they can get, they can lose it just as quickly. Yeah. I mean, how many times do you have an all-star closer who the next year has an ERA north of five, right? And he's never heard from again. Yeah. I mean, then that happens in hockey. You know, maybe not as frequently as it does in baseball with closers, but it happens. It definitely happens. And and confidence is the huge thing. Not only confidence in the team and the goalie, but confidence in the goalie of himself. Mm-hmm. I think a good one that comes to mind if you're looking for kind of a goalie example is Brzezgalov. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he was he was incredible with Ari- Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, yeah, do we have to call them Arizona when Glendale. they weren't no. Phoenix or when they Glendale Arizona Coyotes? I call them. I almost did call Glendale. them the, Edward, which, the Glendale. Which is not the Glendale them, Coyotes. But, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> but no, Brzezgalov was incredible with Phoenix. Yeah. And then he signed with the Flyers, that ridiculous contract, just and awful. it just fell apart. Yeah. And now he's a PTO goalie. Right. Yeah, now he's... This was two years ago. Right. Yeah. He's playing at Edmonton wearing number 80, and then, you know, through then, then whatever we, black magic happened we here... The we the last had, few good games did. out of it. <laughs> and then there was the last game of the year against Nashville when he fell over and gave up an empty netter. Yeah. It, I was like, oh, that's the beginning of the end right he's, there. <laughs> yeah, he's the kind of goalie that he'll make some saves that kind of surprise you, but there's... Every once in a while, he'll let a beach ball pass. Mm-hmm. I mean, just an absolute beach ball. <laughs> and that's the, the confidence thing, too, because, I mean, yeah. and this really came to light when he was on the 24-7 thing and he said all that weird <laughs> yes. stuff about bears and all that. <laughs> right. And, and, and the dog. cosmos and stuff like yeah. that. <laughs> and people are like, I don't really know what he's thinking. Yeah. Well, his teammates don't really know where he's at either. <laughs> exactly. And that's not what you want out of a goalie. And that, that was the thing about, I'm, I'm trying to think of a good example for this, of a goalie who, like, has not just no pulse. It's just a blank slate kind of. And Backstrom maybe is like yeah. that. Yeah, Especially when Backstrom example. was having good years. Yeah. I mean, I, I've interviewed Nicholas Backstrom a couple times. And I, I interviewed him before they went to Finland. Sure. I wrote an article for it for the Wild. 
And, you know, he's going to his hometown. Right. They're going to visit his hometown rink, part of a rink that I think he's part owner of, right. a team he's part owner of. <laughs> and I was like, well, this will be interesting, you know. Right. He's going to have fun showing him around his, his home city. Right. Nah. No, no emotion. <laughs> no, it's no emotion line. about anything. And I, know, and I know that's just how he is. Yeah. And I think a lot of Finnish people might be like that. There's a lot of stereotypes there. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But, <laughs> but from a goalie perspective, he gives up a goal and his emotions don't change. Yeah. Well, you got to make sure he's awake. Right. Yeah. Well, Golov is not that guy. No, he's <laughs> not. He's a little more volatile, you could say. Uh, which, uh, I mean, that's but that was kind of always my beef with Backstrom is that he was so brutally consistent. And he still is, but maybe it's just more because he's a positioning goalie too, and, and not necessarily a you know a big or a reflex first goalie. But he's so brutally consistent, and, and so you know every night he was going to let up two goals, but that was it, you know. And that's what you were getting, and and that's what you needed, you know. Whereas a guy like Brzezgov, we saw it, he carried the Ducks through the playoffs that first you know year where he broke out, and then same thing with the with the Coyotes. But then he's going to have nights where you know he lets up. Four goals yeah. in, in 12 shots. And and it's just, I think that sometimes that kind of goalie is almost better because they get hot. You know, it's kind of like miracle. <laughs> yeah, have you seen him when he gets hot? Yeah. You know, with Jim Craig. And, and obviously Jim Craig How long Craig Jim got Craig's hot. career lasts. Right, exactly. Not very long I mean, in the NHL. You know, but he was hot. He was certainly hot. And, and that, you know, that made that moment. And the same thing with Brzezgov and, and Anaheim and, and – I mean, you can't really argue that for Quick because he's just kind of always good. But, you know, there's been yeah. plenty of goalies like that where and suddenly And Quick's like hot. Dominic Hasek. Right. He doesn't have a style. No, no. He, he just but he flails just around. But you don't know there, what huh? he's going to do right. and you don't know what he's going to get to. Yeah. So yeah, that gets in shooters' heads if yeah. they're not sure. Well, it's not predictable. Yeah. If and you're thinking to yourself, good. like, oh, he's, he might make this save. I don't know how. Yeah. But he might make it. I think you kind of did see that, at least in the Stanley Cup final last year with the New York Rangers. It did creep into their head. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then well, they, they, just, would, they, they just would they throw anything score. At well, in a playoff series, too, when you have to play the same team yeah. for right. two weeks, yeah. and you you probably start in the locker room like, oh, how am I going to score on this guy? Right. You watch film until your eyes bleed, nobody, and it doesn't make a about difference. That with Ilya no, like, no. Is, he, is he gonna taunt our fans tonight? <laughs> <laughs> is he even is he even paying attention during is, the game? Yeah, right. We don't know. Is he at the rink yet? <laughs> it's six fifty eight. It's a good point. So other than that, do you guys have anything else? Uh, I'm dry. Yeah, we, we mean, squeezed fifty two minutes out of this. Uh, yeah, well, after uh, editing out some of our dead dead air, we might whittle it down to about 45 minutes, which is too bad. I think what we can do, since you know, we talked about the fact that this podcast doesn't have a name, sure. we'll put it up on the site. And can, uh, yeah, if our idea. fans want to get on there, if the people who read, I want to say our fans. Sorry. <laughs> our fans. If our fans. And I can tell them what they should vote <laughs> for. You know, those people keep following me down the street, Hard Day's Night style. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have signed some autographs. But those are just my nieces and nephews. Yeah. They really like <laughs> um, No, but if people who read want to come up with a name, I'd say we go with the yeah, best. You came up with a lot of options, I've got a lot, some of which yeah. are very excellent. I've got, but I've got quite a few. What is that, 15 names? We can, so we can take an organic approach to this. Yeah, and, uh, I, I can throw some out. And, um, we, we can do polls. We, yeah, we can do we polls can pull, with our I, software. Hey, so. I, if somebody on there wants to just invent one on their own, I'm yeah, okay with that. that. Too. I'm not going to lie, Giles and the goalies is a good That is a pretty I, good I do like that. It's pretty outstanding. So if you can beat Giles and the goalies, then you I don't. we don't have free stuff to give away. But That's true, we don't. We'll give you a free membership to Wild Extra. Nice. That's that's nice. where we're going with that. Do we drop the other shoe that, that are all free? Or <laughs> no. Did I just do that? Do we maybe maybe uh, get out of jail free card on a moderator point? Yeah. I don't know. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Come in on a Sunday and just start throwing up bombs, and I won't say anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not. Maybe not our greatest idea, but we'll, we'll biggest, work on something. That's the biggest oversell in history. <laughs> So yeah, I, I think that'll that'll wrap it up. We'll see. Uh, we'll I guess to be determined on everything when it comes to this podcast, mm-hmm. but we'll see where it goes from here and, and see what works. Fun. Good, good. All right, been a great time. We'll have to uh, get some food now. So <laughs> thanks for listening. Before I keel over yeah. on the table. If, right. you, if you made it through this, uh, I'll give you a medal. <laughs> we have medals now. So disclaimer: medals. Well, he said he'd give him medals, yeah, no, so that's Giles not my medals. problem. Yeah, we, uh, there's nothing to do with us. So see Giles about that. Alrighty, that'll wrap it up.
Just yesterday morning, they let me know you were gone. Suzanne, the plans they made put an end to you. I walked out this morning and I wrote down this song. I just can't remember who to send it to. I've seen fire and I've seen rain. I've seen sunny days that I thought would never end. I've seen lonely times when I could not find a friend. But I always thought that I'd see you. To look down upon me, Jesus. You gotta help me make a stand. You just got to see me through another day. My body's aching and my time is at hand. I won't make it any other way. Whoa, I've seen fire and I've seen rain. Sunny days that I thought would never end. I've seen lonely times when I could not find a friend, but I always thought that I'd see you again. Been walking my mind to an easy time, my back turned towards the sun. Lord knows when the cold wind blows, it'll turn your head around. Well, there's hours of time on the telephone line to talk about things to come. Sweet dreams and flying machines in pieces on the ground. Oh, I've seen fire and I've seen rain. I've seen sunny days that I thought would never end. I've seen lonely times when I could not find a friend, but I always thought that I'd see you, baby, one more time again. Now. Thought I'd see you one more time again. There's just a few things coming my way this time around. 